Have you guys ever heard of a book called Moby Dick? It's quite popular. It's about this sailor who sees a white whale and starts stalking it or something. I didn't really get the themes. But I found myself being overcome with an obsessive thought I just couldn't let go of. Oh, creep. So, are there whales in Singapore? Your hands are stupid. My name is Dad. I'm a writer. I like to find out about stuff. Is a banana a tree or grass? Or? <laughs> this is Vic, my producer. She doesn't know a lot of stuff. And then it's minimum, right? Minimum means drink. We investigate. The small baby. Stop. Oh. Search high and low. How did we know that? To find answers to some silly questions. Oh, well, chili crab is from robber crabs. Ah. Why are they called sperm whale? No matter how weird things get. And when you turn off that microphone... <laughs> wow, it's boring. Don't drink and drive. Oh, wow. Do you have a pen knife? No. <laughs> Together, we deep dive into stuff we don't know about. It's sad. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna die here. You might not know about it too. <laughs> Disgusting. Now you do. Diam lah. So, Vic and I went looking. Lots of fish and other animals, but no whales, unfortunately. In case you don't know what whales are, they are large marine mammals with hairless, streamlined bodies, horizontal tail fins, and blowholes where they breathe. There are actually two types of whales, baleen whales and poofed whales. Baleen whales, like blue whales and humpback whales, will use their baleen plates to see prey from water. Tooth whales, they use their teeth to, you know, hunt and nom 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 nom. I hope you guys know what kind of whales there are now. While it's rare to spot a whale in Southeast Asia, it's not entirely unheard of. Thailand, Philippines and Indonesia have all seen beach whales recently. In 2023, a 17-metre whale was stranded on a beach in Bali. It was the third time it had happened in a month. Residents had to bury the whale carcasses, all of which had trash in their bellies. Have you guys encountered a whale in Singapore before? No. Um, no, I have not. I never. Whale? Yeah. Um, no. How big do you think the whale is like roughly? Maybe like this big? Like very big. Uh. I would say it's very big. Very big? Okay. Yeah. But when do you think there's no whales in Singapore? There's no space? Pollution, yeah. maybe. I've recounted somewhere that I read an article but a dead one washed up onto Singapore, if I'm not wrong. I, I, I don't remember too much. I remember the headline mainly, that it was a dead whale washed up on the beach in Singapore. Yes, he was right. A gargantuan creature weighing around 8 to 10,000 kilograms washed up on our shores in 2015. No, no. Not your mother. It was actually a 10.6 meter long female sperm whale. The was washed up to the shore in 2015. So it's an opportunity for us to have this whale. Unfortunately, it was found stranded in 2015, aka SG50. So, in our nationalistic fervor, we named the poor whale Jubilee. Oh, I should probably pay my respects, right? I think I'll pay my respects to the fish. She's not a fish that she's a marine mammal. Luckily, Jubilee is still here in Singapore, but she's not exactly buried. You can drop by and pay your respects at the Natural History Museum. I know what you're thinking. What could have possibly happened to this big marine mammal? How did she end up in our waters? We contacted Dr. Matthias to give us a little bit more insight into whales. Strandings can happen pretty much anywhere. There's different reasons why animals might strand. One is they're sick and they beach themselves. They're basically too sick to move on and they end up on a beach. Option two is they're totally healthy and they just got disoriented most likely has to do with magnetic anomalies in the magnetic field of the Earth. And the third possibility is exposure to man-made sounds. What that Navy sonar might be doing is stress them out so loud that it basically bursts the eardrum and then they just shoot up to the top, to the surface, you basically die of decompression. Why do you think there are relatively less uh, beachings or strandings in Singapore waters? In Singapore waters, we don't have very good visibility. Even if we had a whale carcass sitting on the bottom somewhere, it would be very hard to find. And in Singapore, you have very strong currents. Washes through at high speed. Reason for that is the reclamation uh, of all the islands in between, right? So it has reduced the water flow. And of course, the channels that you have now flow much faster. So most likely, if there were any threadings, that would also be a problem because it would just wash everything out. 
Good. <laughs> uh, but obviously they prefer deeper waters. They don't really come that close. So that's, it's rather surprising to have something this close here. In general, this is actually fairly shallow water here. Uh, average water depth, I think, is about 50 meters in the South China Sea. Juvenile sperm whale, uh, they might explore uh, different regions and come closer. I've seen them in fairly shallow water too, but uh, they normally stay in, in deeper waters. Speaking of our shallow waters, here's a map of Singapore. Our waters have an average depth of about 22 meters. It used to be deeper, but it changed with land reclamation. In this NUS paper we found, they mentioned that land reclamation played a big part in the changing of our tides, causing the increase of sediment pollution in our waters and poor visibility. Jubilee must have wandered into our water somehow. But how did she die? But what you see here is the one, there's one missing uh, vertebra. Most likely that was ship strike, that's how the whale died. So normally ship strikes are, they break the back. And of course their main method of protrusion is their tail fin. And you cannot swim anymore and that means you can't hunt, you can't feed, you can move away from danger, so uh, that's normally the end. So after Professor Matthias... It's Dr. Matthias, not Professor. So after Dr. Matthias told us that Jubilee was likely killed by a ship, I went to go do some digging and I found this. In 2015, we were named the top maritime capital of the world, with a vessel arrival tonnage of 2.5 billion gross tons. In 2023, that's jumped to 3 billion. According to MPA, Singapore is the busiest port in the world, with an average of 140,000 vessels calling in annually. Here's a map of Singapore and the water around it. Get ready for it. This is the traffic around our waters. So poor Jubilee must have been surrounded by ships when her tail got just sliced in half. We also found that Jubilee's stomach was full of squid, pyrosomes, and lots and lots of plastic. So Jubilee, uh, yeah, she was like chemically... That was, that was chemically. Yeah. First of all, mechanically removed, I mean, you're cutting off all, as much flesh as you can, and then the rest you do chemically. In order to get just the flesh, you need to be very careful about how long you expose it to chemicals, what kind of chemicals uh, to clean it, and then you still have to do some cleaning afterwards. It's not something that you can do in a couple of days and then be done with it. It's a couple of years process for this size. While Jubilee's death is a tragedy, I don't think her story will be forgotten anytime soon. Um, it's well known and you can visit her anytime. Unfortunately, that's not the case for every whale out there because I actually found one that washed up on our shores earlier than Jubilee in the 1990s. So this is Willy. <laughs> and Willy is actually not a sperm whale, but a false killer whale. Huh? It's a false you knew it? Sodorka chrysidens, or fake orcas with large teeth, have longer, slender teeth, darker bodies, no white spots, and are generally smaller than killer whales. But their skulls kind of do look similar, I guess. For comparison, Here's a human, here's Jubilee, and here's Willy. She was seen swimming... Near Tuas, right? Yeah. This one is Tuas. Yeah. Sentosa Underwater World tried to rescue her. The day after they tried to save it, it was dead. Uh, how, trying to save her? Yeah. They spent like 10 k a large net and a trailer boat. Oh, like equipment to try yeah, and... Oh. Yeah, yeah. Whoever was the fisherman near the area would make a huge profit. <laughs> hey, you want the trawler boat? Uh? Yeah. Willy the false killer whale was female, old, and likely died from infections, injuries, puncture wounds, and stress. Stress? Stress, you're stressed. Just because it's near Singapore. Oh, and the cost of living them there. <laughs> so according to some old newspaper articles we found, Willy actually drew around 200 onlookers the first time she was spotted in Tuas. Um, people thought that she was enjoying herself because she was swimming up and down the waters there. She wasn't. <laughs> People actually brought out boats and sampans just to get closer to her. I think probably stressed her out even more. I think like Dr. Matthias said, uh, the sounds and the sonar waves from the boats just would have caused her even more distress than she was already in. It sounds very cruel, I think, because it is. I mean, just look at this quote from um, a boy that was watching her in the crowd. He said that he hoped she would die so that he could eat her meat. Ten days later, he got his wish because Billy turned up dead. But it's sad because like today, everyone seems to have forgotten her and her kind of unfortunate ending at Tuas. Yeah, no one seems to remember her at all. 
In this article, a little girl called Santi asked, Can we see it once to say goodbye? Since we couldn't find out online if she did, we did the next best thing. Now, do you remember anything about the whale? When I look through the, I Google, I look through, uh, I think uh, a bit and there I still can remember, la, but not, not all things. No, no, all things. Uh, have you been to the Lee Kong Chen Natural History Museum? No, not yet. Will you be interested on it? It can be my kids, la, so maybe I can uh, expose you with the fish thing and the history of the whale. <laughs> Ken. But another article did state that Willy was buried and the part of her lower jaw and teeth were preserved by underwater worlds in Pusa. That whale was buried, but yeah. Jubilee was chem, uh, it was a chemical product. Yeah, uh, a chemical process. Why the difference? Was it the size? I don't know why they buried it though. I still quite... How, how do you... Ba- plastic bag! Huh? Willy's body was later buried at Lorong Halus. They buried it just for what sentimentality reason. Cannot be what? No, I think they buried it because of lack of space or something. They couldn't burn it. What oven can fit a whale? <laughs> you can't cut it. Dude, it was a small whale, yeah. Back in the 90s, very few people had done this, so the easiest way is just to bury it. Then the smell of the beast is gone, and you can still recover the bones afterwards. And uh, you don't want a rotting carcass. It will stink for months. You can't incinerate it because of the gas also, right? Just, and it's too liquid. What do you? I mean, with what are you going to incinerate? You, you could, in theory, you could cut it up and incinerate it. And at that time, I don't think they had much incinerators at the time. But even then, it would take a long time to, to burn up. Same goes for marine mammals. It's mainly water. Till the water is evaporated, uh, that takes a lot of time. Fastest way is dig a big hole, roll it in, close it off. I mean, I, I wasn't there, so <laughs> I, it's just a guess. But I would, I would think that that's... Smell, like, that's, you think smell that's, is that's probably most likely the, the smell. Yeah. Kind of be. So I checked in with the Natural History Museum if they knew the whereabouts of Willie's jaw, and they do. So after Underwater World Sentosa closed, they actually took it and they have it. They've asked us whether we want to come down. I said yes. I guess um, we get to say goodbye to Willie on behalf of Santi. Oh, it's Willie, yeah. Mm. Oh, Willie. Oh, <laughs> Willie. Ah, oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, this is all that remains of the false killer wheel. Wow, it's so... Yeah, that's the Natural History Museum. We, find, we found Willie's uh, lower jaw. So, we're done lah, but... As in, yeah, we got the jaw, right? It's, I think that's not... That's really nice for them, right? There's two of them, but... I don't know if that's enough. I don't, I don't know if we can call it a day. I, I'm not comfortable. Say something about the rest being... Thrown away. Thrown away, right? Yeah. So why you want to find the wheel? We can maybe try to find the wheel. The rest of the wheel. The rest of the wheel. We asked the museum if they knew where Willy was buried in Loring Halos. But all they said was that Willy was not so much buried, but rather left at the former landfill amongst a mountain of refuse. Initially, we thought this was Loring Halos. But actually, no. This is Loring Halos. Loring Halos, which in Malay means narrow street or delicate and miniature, it's actually a giant area of unforgiving dense forest. It was originally used for farms and plantations, but was later turned into a dumping ground in the 1970s. It's ironic and sad that while Jubilee washed up on shore with a tummy full of trash, it's Willie who was put to rest at the trash dump. It is a lot of land to cover, especially since Willie is pretty small for a whale. Vic managed to narrow down an area of the former landfill dedicated to refuse in the 90s which means that Willy is somewhere here. We wanted to give our Willy a special send-off. Dude, don't you stay near here? If, yeah, but like, I don't... It's not like, I hate nature. Oh. <laughs> so we set out to find her. Faced with dead end after dead end, we walked on, determined to find the nicer spot we could for our dear Willy. If you're here, Willy, send us a sign. And then we found it. It's not the sea, but I mean, there's water lah, so... In Animal Crossing, that means there's a fish there. It's a tranquil place. None of the stress that might have afflicted Willie in the final few days of agony in Tuas. I think there's a difference between documenting and remembering. Time goes by really quick. Documentation is a better way for memory to live on. Remembering is a bit more fake. You just sit around and think about stuff. A giant wheel exhibit in a museum wing documents things really well. To be fair, so does a jaw in the back rooms to a certain extent. So you can go to these places to learn more about certain events or times in Singapore. But it's important to remember too. 
Hopefully if you, for some reason, find yourself in Lorong Halus, take a bit of a breather in the pavilion. And remember the false killer that once washed up on our shores. Oh, you can enjoy some nature while you're at it. They're called sperm whales because of their large forehead. That is called the spermaceti organ. But what it actually is, an acoustic amplifier, somewhere in the back of the head, and then it bounces back and forth, and it amplifies, and then goes out. If the sperm whale points its beam at you, you feel it in your body. It, it's very, very loud. It's like getting hit. <laughs>